Good morning, everybody. How are you? Let's see. Is this better? I'm always trying to get stuff adjusted. I am on my phone streaming because for some reason, my computer, the camera would not work. So let me turn off other devices. Let's see what's going on. Okay, perfect. Yay. All right, everybody, welcome to Tea Time with Jesus. I am so excited to be joining you today, this morning. Um, my name is Leslie Williams, and um, this is Tea Time with Jesus. Uh, we always have new folks that tune in and that listen. And if you are new, um, welcome. Tea Time with Jesus is what I like to define as a amazing virtual quiet time experience um, with some of the best people on the planet. Um, and why do I say that? Because we have people that tune in, that watch um, the replays from all over, um, who carve out time on their Saturday mornings when you could be out grocery shopping, you could be out, you know, you could be up doing so many other things on Saturday mornings, but they carve out time to spend time with Jesus. And so um, that's that, and that's what we do. And so the purpose of this is to encourage you not only to do it on Saturday mornings, but to make it a practice to carve out time with Jesus. Um, I will say spending time with Jesus is one of the best investments you can ever make in your entire life. It is life giving um, and it's a return not only that you will get, but that will pass on to your children, your children's children, your children's children's children. Um, so it's an amazing, amazing, amazing um investment that you can make. And so I just want to encourage you to do that. So we not only encourage folks to do that on Saturday mornings, but we encourage you to make this a habit every day. Um, if we say that Jesus is the center of everything, then what better way than to spend time with someone who you feel is important to you. All right. So we are going to get started in a bit, but I want to make sure that we have all of our tea time tools. And you're like, Leslie, what do you mean by tea time tools? This is Tea Time with Jesus, and we got to set ourselves up right, y'all. So the first thing that I like to encourage people to have is um, your Bible. I still use, like, paper because I like paper. Um, I like a hard cover. I like carrying, having it in my hand. Um, but I also use devices if I'm looking at different translations. So whatever way that you're able to put your eyes on the scripture, not just your ears, guys, we want to eliminate distractions. There are so many distractions coming out. And so we want to eliminate that, especially during this time that we're carving out with Jesus. Um, so make sure you have something to look up the scriptures on and or in and your journal. I'm a journal girl. Um, why do you have a journal? Because when the Holy Spirit speaks, you need to write it down, whether that's in your phone, whether that's um, on your computer, whether that's on your tablet, whatever the case may be, when the Holy Spirit speaks, you want to be able to, um, to write it down. And then lastly, get a cup of tea or whatever beverage makes your soul sparkle on a Saturday morning. So I don't know if that's a protein shake. I don't know if it's water. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but cocoa is June, but I don't know. Some people drink cocoa throughout the year. My daughter would if she could. Whatever it is, there's no judgment. Just get something that you enjoy. Um, so I have a little mug. Joy comes in the morning. I like my tea. I'm so a tea girl. I never, I don't really like coffee, but I do like tea. So anyway, so we are all set up. Um, I'm so excited about our, our um, topic for today. We've been in this um, series, it was an accidental series that was about truth and just walking in truth and how truth sets us free and how not knowing truth, not walking in truth, being ignorant of things can lead to destruction. You know, that's what the Bible says. And so we as believers have no reason to be ignorant. We have no reason to be deceived, but we do know that deception is high. It is running rampant. And it's to the point where the deception is running so rampant and is so bold 
that it's not even hiding itself anymore. Like, I'm kind of getting, I am getting ahead of myself, but I'm going to finish this point before I formally introduce what we're talking about. It is so interesting, y'all. This kind of kind of set us up. Okay, kind of set your hearts up for what we're going to talk about. Buckle your seatbelts. It's going to be so good. But here's the deal. The enemy is so conniving. He is so deceptive that he's not even trying to hide himself anymore. It's to the point where he has tricked us and deceived us so hard to where we think, oh, that's not real. Oh, they're just playing. Oh, no, that's, you know, that's not, that's not the case. He has deceived us so hard in that area, so much in that area. So I just want to kind of give you that little teaser before we get formally started on how deception is running rampant in our world and how as believers, we should not be deceived. So um, we're going to have a guest that will be joining us. One of my friends that I talk a lot with on this, with this subject, um, about this subject with. Um, so she'll be on in a few, um, but we're going to go ahead and just kind of get started with the introduction of it. Um, so for the past few months, the Holy Spirit has been showing me a lot about music. So our topic today is, is it's not just music. It's not just music is our topic. So for the past few months, the Holy Spirit has been showing me a lot about music. Many of these things I keep to myself or I share with those that are closest to me. Thank you, Aunt Pat. Good morning. You're blessed as well. So many of the things I keep to myself are, you know, I share with those closest to me. I call it my soapbox. And like I'll go to my sister's room, my sister Dawn, and I'll knock on her door and I was like, ooh, I got to get my soapbox out. You know, or, you know, I'll call my friend Eldrita and I'm like, guess what? Guess what was revealed to me? Guess what I saw? And so um, the folks that are closest to me, um, they've been hearing this for the past few months. Um, and I just felt like the Lord just opened up the door um, and gave me the green light to share it with you guys this morning. And so this morning, when I was up praying and I asked the Lord, I said, pull back the curtain, God, and let me see what you want me to see. Like, what do you what's going on? What do you want me to what do you want me to say? And the Holy Spirit clearly said to me and guys, this is regarding the music and the music industry. Um, I am not like one of those. Like, I don't know, conspiracy theorist people, but hear me out. Um, the Holy Spirit clearly said to me, Leslie, it's bad. It's really bad. So there are a lot of industries that have demonic influence, but the music industry is the one that has one of the strongest grips of demonic influence on the earth. Like it's like a vice, like the, one of the strongest, the strongest grips. If you think about it, you know, you'll hear a song and the beat is so enticing. OK, notice the words I'm using, grip, enticing. These are the words that the Holy Spirit is bringing to me to describe this to you, even as I'm talking. The music is so enticing. You find yourself nodding to the beat or you'll say, oh, I can't just I can't get that beat out of my head. You may even wake up with that beat still going on because the music is so enticing. And you might be saying to yourself, Leslie, it's just music. How many times have you said that? I've, I've heard it so many times. I have never said it about music, but I've used that. It's just blah, blah, blah. It's just music. But friends, anytime we use the word just in this context, not in the music context, but to justify something, we're making an attempt to justify our action, comparing it to another standard, because deep down inside, we know the decision we're making is not the highest standard. Deep, di deep down inside, we know that that song, that that music, that that lyric, that's not the highest standard. That's not God's best. I'm talking to people who can, who believe, who've professed that Jesus is their Lord and Savior. Friends, if that's you, the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you, right? And so you have the Holy Spirit. It's not the universe. It's not something told me. 
If Jesus is your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. And it is not this very vague universe. And so the Holy Spirit is prompting your heart. He gave you that nudge that tells you, uh huh, something's not right. But because you have chosen to analyze it with your logical mind and ignore your spirit, that's when that phrase, it's just music, comes into play. So I'm here to tell you that music is not just neutral. It's not just this, this vague thing, right? And the origin of the song, the music, the artist that you listen to in your ears over and over again, the way you move your body, who you move your body to, the music, all of that matters. And it matters to your soul. And so if you have a desire to grow in Christ, if you're saying, so let me say this, if you're cool saying where you are with Jesus, then this message may not apply to you as deeply as the Lord intends for it to. So if you're cool and you're like, Leslie, I'm cool with my relationship with God. I'm not trying to grow. I'm not trying to go deeper. I'm good. Well, this mute, this message may not be the one you want to listen to. But if you're saying that my relationship with Jesus is deeply important, and I know that was harsh, but it's real. If you're saying my relationship with Jesus is deeply important and I want to grow, then you may want to tune up as we explore this topic. And so if that's the case, you want to see things in truth, right? If you're saying, I want to grow in Christ, you want to see things in truth. You don't want to see things based, based on your narrow perspective, based on exclusively your culture, the way you grew up. You want to see it in truth. You want to see it the way the kingdom sees it. So what is truth? How do you get to truth? So you get to truth by surrendering your personal opinion to God and choosing to see things the way that God sees it through the Holy Spirit. If the two match up, great. What does that look like? Lord, I surrender my music appetite to you. Lord, speak to my heart. Tell me what music is what. Should I be listening to that God? Well, God, that obviously does not line up with you. I'm surrendering my appetite to you. I'm surrendering um, that desire to you. I'm surrendering um, that interest to you, Lord, and then see what the Holy Spirit tells you about it. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal truth. Truth is not hidden. Despite what we may think, despite what I think people kind of believe generally, that truth is not hidden. The Bible says that he'll give us wisdom. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will bring you into all truth. Friends, truth is hidden if you don't have the Holy Spirit because it is only he that can bring you into all truth. So after you surrender your personal opinion to God, your musical appetite, all that, if you surrender to God, if the two match up, great, right? So I'm not saying what like, that everybody's appetite is going to be the same, but you have to know what God is speaking to you about what works best for you. If that makes any sense. So if we don't surrender our appetite to the Lord, um, we can choose to be arrogant and stubborn and keep our opinion regardless of what we're being shown, or we can choose to grow in Christ and take on the truth of God and walk in that truth. Okay. Amen. So let's look at Hosea 4, 6. Hosea 4, 6. And so this is a scripture that, um, that we've been talking about over the past few tea times. Um, it says that my people will perish for lack of knowledge. But I'm going to read it from the Young's literal translation. And the Young's little literal translation is um, it has the closest translation that's in Hebrew and Greek and all that stuff. So it's called a literal translation. It tries to take the, the text and try to literally translate it. So this is what it says. Cut off have been my people for lack of knowledge because though knowledge has rejected, 
I reject thee from being priest to me, and thou forgottest the law of thy God. I forget thy sons, I also. I like this, cut off have been my people for lack of knowledge. So what is lack of knowledge cutting you off from? Is it cutting you off from walking in, um, in a greater anointing? Is it cutting you off from fully fulfilling the purpose that God has for you um, in the way that he has for you to fulfill it? Is it cutting you off from passing on wisdom and truth to your children? Like what is lack of wisdom or lack of knowledge cutting you off from? So as we're exploring this topic, I just want you to kind of analyze what's going on in your heart, because I understand that this topic is one that can be a bit controversial because people do not like you to mess with their music. But the only thing that I'm asking you to do this morning is to surrender your appetite to the Holy Spirit, surrender it to the Lord and see what the Holy Spirit says to you about it. And like I said, if the two match up, great, wonderful. And if it doesn't match up, my question is, are you willing to make the adjustment that the Holy Spirit is leading you to make? Are you willing to make that adjustment? Let's look at Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, 2 says this. Do not be conformed to this world. Just because something is, okay, I'm going to finish reading, then we'll go into an explanation. Do not be conformed to this world, this age fashioned after and adapted to its external and superficial customs. This is the Bible. It says, don't look like the world. Don't be conformed to it, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind. This is the amplified version. Not by some, not by just, you know, a little bit, not everything, but that one thing, but the entire renewal of your mind um, by its new ideals and its new attitude so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. Okay, we're gonna break this down just a little bit. Do not be conformed to this world. Do not adapt yourself to the world around you. Just because something is popular doesn't mean you have to jump on the bandwagon. Just because something is trendy doesn't mean that you have to start doing it. I'm going to say this, my latest example. Just because people are... Putting pronouns at the end of their signature doesn't mean that you have to. Do not be conformed to this world. Fashioned after and adapted to its new external and superficial customs. This is what the Bible says. This is not the book of Leslie. This is the book of Romans. But be transformed, but be changed. We don't come to Christ to stay the same. We come to Christ so that we can be transformed so we can look more like Christ. So if you're saying, like before Christ, I did all these things, like I listened to this, like I just, you know, I did that thing, then that's not why you come to Christ for freedom. If you were free before Christ, and you come to Christ for freedom and to walk in truth. And if you were free before Christ, then you, that means ultimately you saved yourself. And I don't know anyone that has. So the Bible says in order for us to be transformed, we have to renew our minds by its new ideals and its new attitudes and, and the new way of thinking and the way that Christ is leading us. We have to renew our minds so that we can think and we can look and we can act and we can be in this world like Jesus. It says so that you may prove for yourselves what is the acceptable and perfect will of God. You won't have to have anybody telling you all the time 
this is acceptable and that's not acceptable, right? Like you would have your mind renewed. You have the Holy Spirit. You're surrendering to the Holy Spirit. And so you're able to determine you won't operate in confusion. Maybe that's a better way of saying it. You won't be confused about what God's will is because your mind has been renewed because you've taken on the thoughts of Christ. You've taken on the, the leading of the Holy Spirit. You won't be confused and you'll be able to determine what is the perfect will of God. It says even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. So my whole purpose in setting up our talk this morning with that is because the question is, how deep do you want to go with Jesus? Because you can stay and float on the surface and you can just stay on the surface and never go deep and never fully evolve in the way that the Lord has destined for you to bloom and evolve in this earth. You can choose to do that. And if so, that's your choice. That's you. And that's fine. But if you want to go deeper with the Lord, then let's go. The reason why I said, do you want to go deeper? Because when you start talking about music and stuff, people say, oh, it's not that deep. Depends on how deep you want to go. So anyway, so let's pray. We're going to pray this morning. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, Lord God, for your grace. I thank you, Lord, for your spirit is here, Lord. I thank you for your revelation. I thank you for your truth, Lord God. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for literally prying open our hearts to receive your truth this morning, Father. Some of our hearts are like locked down, God. And I ask, Lord God, whether that's some of them are locked down just because we've held so tightly to the things of the world or the way we grew up or our culture, Lord. And I pray, Lord God, that you begin to um, tenderize hearts and pry open the doors of our hearts to reveal your truth, Lord God. So, Father, we just thank you for this moment. We thank you for this transformative moment that it will be life changing for all of us. Father God, as as we just sit before you, Lord, and we just soak in whatever you want to do this morning, God. We thank you for shining the light, Father God, um, and giving us the truth and the revelation and giving us the courage and the faith to walk out what you show us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. So this is so good. I'm so excited. Okay. So one of the things that we must understand is God's original design for music. Now, I will say this. We're not going to talk about everything and I'm not even going to profess to know everything. I'm just sharing with you what I believe the Lord wants me to share with you this morning. So one of the things we must understand is God's original design for music. When you start talking about a thing as a believer, like once you come into the kingdom of God and God is your father, Jesus is your Lord and Savior. The question you have to start asking in the my renewal process is, God, what was your original design for it? Let's take it back to the root of the thing, because the root of anything matters. So, again, for us to be believers and say, oh, that's just music. That's not very clear thinking, because the father is very intentional about everything he does. He's not vague or scatterbrained or anything like that. He is very intentional. So the question that I'm encouraging you to ask the Holy Spirit about anything is, God, what was your original design for it? When you created it, what did you have in mind? And so I just came across a few ways that the Bible talks about God and music. And so one point is God wants us to sing songs to him. Music was designed for us to worship the Lord. You know, God wants us to sing songs to him. If you have your Bible, if you're taking notes, I'm going to go through scriptures to support this. Psalm 147, 1. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Psalm 105, 2. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Sing to him, sing to God. God wants us to also sing songs to each other. 
to songs that will encourage each other and strengthen each other and edify each other. Colossians 3.16 tells us this, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Songs from the spirit, that tells me that songs come from your spirit. There is a spiritual component of songs. There's a spiritual component of music, singing to God with gratitude in your heart, right? Music creates joy. So when people are like, oh, I just love music, it creates joy. It's supposed to. It's supposed to create joy. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18 through 21. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart giving thanks always and for everything to God, the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Another reason, another component of God in music is that God sings over us. Isn't that beautiful, friends, to know that God sings over you, that you're just not singing to God, that is not just a one-way thing, but he's singing over you? Zephaniah 317, the Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. His love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. God will rejoice over you with singing. I love that. That's one of my favorites. Um, I like also 1 Corinthians 14, 13 through 15. Therefore, the one who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What then shall I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my mind. I will sing with my spirit. Again, there's another indication. There's a spiritual component with music. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my mind. I will sing with my spirit. Music coming from your spirit, but I will also sing with my mind two different places. So music was used as a form of expression to worship God, to encourage each other, to express emotions. Even the songs of lament, those songs that express sorrow and grief and sadness, they were designed to be a pathway of praise to God. They weren't just sitting and talking about, Lord, this is horrible. The world is horrible. Everything is bad. Yeah, it said that, but it usually, it didn't end there. But I will praise you, Lord. <laughs> you know, like it, it took a turn. It was designed to get the emotion out, but also serve as a pathway of praise to God. So think about this. If the Bible, if God talks this much about music, do you not think that music is spiritual? You know, I've had a lot of people that just say, again, our statement that we opened up with, it's just music. But if God talks this much about music, if he if he used music in these ways, like, is it just music? So if music can usher in the Holy Spirit, you know, like when you're in church, right, or you're at home worshiping and you are putting on your favorite worship music and the presence of the Holy Spirit comes in and you feel stronger. Why do we not think that music cannot be used for the purpose of the devil and usher in a demonic presence? Why for some reason Christians don't think that? Like there is opposites, right? There's light, there's dark. The Bible talks about there is an enemy and the Bible even describes him as being music. So why do we not think that the enemy can pervert the intentions of God as it relates to music and use it for his purposes? And why do we not think that if music can usher in the presence of the Holy Spirit, that music cannot usher in a demonic force. 
I think I'm going to pause and let that sit there. You know, the reason why I say that before we go on is that people had, um, and then I'm going to let, I'm going to let um, Eldrita in because she just joined us. Um, we had that Travis Scott concert here last year and people are like, oh man, that was just music. We can't blame Travis, blah, 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 blah. Right. But I watched snippets of it and y'all, the presence of the Lord was not there. I will just say that he was not there. My spirit, the Lord showed me his presence was not there. It ushered in some very strong demonic influence. Now, whether that was intentional on Travis Scott's part or not, I don't know. But I do know that when you surrender yourself and open up the door and entertain things, whether that's ignorantly or whether that's purposely, then consequences happen. And so, again, that's why I started off talking about like deception, like things are in our face and that we're not even, we're not seeing it. So we're going to look at the power of music in the spirit realm. Let me let in our guest, who is Eldrita Williams. Hold on one second, y'all. Okay. Did I do that right? I have to stream. Are we there? We're there. <laughs> Yay. Good morning. Good morning, good morning everybody. <laughs> How are you? Good, good, good. So we're in the middle of the teaching and then we're going to talk, we're going to have you to share on that story that we talked about yesterday. Okay. All so right. we're looking at the power of music in the spirit realm. So let's turn to 1 Samuel 16. We're going to start at verse 14. Okay, right, 1 Samuel 16. We're going to start at verse 14 and we're going to go through da, 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 23. So just to summarize it, this is a story where Saul was being harassed by a dark presence, as I think as the message translation describes it. And he had someone to come in and play music. And he said, once that music is played, then that presence would leave. Okay, So this is an indication about how music can operate in the spirit realm. Verse 14, at that very moment, the spirit of God left Saul and in its place, a black mood sent by God settled on him. He was terrified. Okay, let me clarify that. It says a black mood sent by God. I'm gonna bring out some other references. Do you remember? Okay, so do you remember when the enemy went to the Lord and was like, hey, I can't touch Job because you have a hedge of protection around him. And so the Lord removed his hedge of protection and all that happened, right? So. The black mood was not sent by God. It's just saying that God took his hands off of, off of Saul. Okay. So I just want to clarify that. At that very moment, the spirit of God left Saul and in its place, a black mood sent by God settled on him. He was terrified. It brought in fear. Saul's advisor said, this awful tormenting depression from God is making your life miserable. Oh, master, let us help. Let us look for someone who can play the harp. When the black mood from God moves in, he'll play his music and you'll feel better. Saul told his servants, go ahead, find me someone who can play well and bring him to me. One of the young men spoke up. I know someone I've seen in myself, the son of Jesse of Bethlehem, an excellent musician. He's also courageous of age, well-spoken and good looking and God is with him. Okay, so he said God is with this musician. This musician has an anointing, okay? So Saul sent messengers to Jesse requesting, send your son David to me, the one who tends the sheep, okay? The one who plays the harp, the one who's good looking, the one who's an excellent musician, the way they just described him in verse 18. Jesse took a donkey, loaded it with a couple of loaves of bread, a flask of wine and a young goat and sent his son David with it to Saul. David came to Saul and stood before him. Saul liked him immediately and made him his right-hand man. Saul sent word back to Jesse. Thank you, David will stay here. He's just the one I was looking for. I'm very impressed by him. After that, whenever the bad depression from God tormented Saul, okay, there was a tormenting spirit. David, 
who was an excellent musician, who God was with, got out his harp and he played. That would calm Saul down and he would feel better as the moodiness lifted. He would feel better after he played the harp and that depression would go. So this is an example in the Bible about how music is connected, the power of music in the spirit realm. And so um, Miss Eldrita and I were talking yesterday and she brought up another good example about how music can be used in a negative sense and enticing to entice people. Would you like to share on that, Miss Eldrita? Sure, sure. Um, it comes from Matthew 14 and 6. And this is a story where Herod, um, he had married Herodias, his brother's wife. And uh, he was upset with John the Baptist because John had told him that that was not the right thing to do. So um, I'll read you the scripture and then we can we can talk about it. So uh, Matthew, I'll start with three. Matthew 14, three. Herod had, and this is the uh, contemporary English version. Herod had earlier arrested John and chained him and put him in prison. He did this because John had told him it isn't right for you to take Herodias, the wife of your brother Philip. Herod wanted to kill John, but the people thought John was a prophet and Herod was afraid of what they might do. So when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced for the guest. She was pleased. She pleased Herod so much he swore to give her whatever she wanted. But the girl's mother told her to say, here on the serving plate, I want the head of John the Baptist. So um, if you're familiar with this story, some versions will tell you that Herod had promised to give Herodias' daughter half of his kingdom, up to half of his kingdom, whatever she wanted, whatever she wanted was not too big for her to ask for, and he would do it. And uh, it further goes on further to say that he did exactly what she what she wanted because she enticed him so much with the dancing and the music, it it just it it encaptivated him. It it just took over his spirit, and he was so taken with her, and and that he literally had a man's head cut off. He later regretted it, but mm -hmm. he knew that it was it was he was so intoxicated by what was taking over his eyes. So that ties in into where music, when God says to guard your eyes and your ears, he's saying that for a reason because your ears and your eyes are so important to your spirit. Once, once you've become a believer, you have been perfected. Your spirit has been perfected, but it's our soul that, that seems to have a lot of issues. So, you know, we, we, we go with, oh, it's, it's just this or it's just that or it sounds good to us and, you know, and it's, and it's just entertainment, but that's not what it is. It's deception. It's a foothold for the enemy to get into your ears and to start playing those rhythms and to bring in such melodies. Because remember, Satan, he was an angel of music. He was the angel of music. And he knows how to deceive us through those things. And when we get out and we're and we're doing those dances and we're and we are, you know, uh, and excuse my my language, but I'm going to say we're gyrating to those. I'll be very frank. Hope it's no children on. But we're we're moving our bodies in such a way that is so enticing to the eye that it is it's it's not pleasing to God. First of all. But we have to ask ourselves, what kind of attention are we getting from that? What what do we want? What what are we doing to do that? And you know, for this man, I, I, and I don't know. I'm 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 probably just speculating here. I am speculating. He was so enticed by his wife's daughter. You know, think about the lustfulness that was going on in his head to see her moving however she was moving to get half of the kingdom or whatever she wanted. So music plays a lot 
into our lives. If we're not careful, the deception could, could really, really, you know, it could do damage, it, serious damage to us. And we don't want to, to you know, be, be so naive to what's going on to that, you know, we, we're passing those things on down to our children. And, and we're not, and we're just not aware of it. God says we perish because of a lack of knowledge. God mm -hmm. said he gives wisdom and understanding freely. Ask mm -hmm. God for, ask God for the wisdom and understanding in these songs. Ask him for what it is. What am I listening to? Does this bring pleasure to you, God? You know, or, or is this just something that the enemy is using my ears to keep me away from the truth of the word of God? That's right. Mm -hmm. Like before, when we listen to worship songs, it lifts us up. You know, it mm -hmm. it it brings joy and happiness and life. It brings mm -hmm. it brings all of those things into our into our souls, and and you know, we go we leave feeling happier and lighter and and mm -hmm. joyful and and you know and like conquerors. But yeah. when we are hearing the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's doing just the opposite to our spirits. You know, I'm, I am not, I've never been a fan of blues music because it cries too much. It's like, I'm not a whoa, whoa broken down, no, kind yeah. of whatever. You know, it's like, yeah. I did not listen to that yeah. music because it, <laughs> it just made me sad. And, and yeah. I don't like feeling sad. So we have to be, be very careful of what you're letting into your ears, into your eyes. Yes, yes. Um, Aunt, my Aunt Pat says that's why there's an off button on our remotes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's right. No, you're exactly right. Those are two clear examples in the Bible on how music has had the power to drive away a demonic force and to usher in demonic influence. That is, a, Those are two prime examples. So music has been used to establish First of all, music has a spirit behind it. That's what we've talked about. And I think we've become so numb to discerning the spirit for the sake of a beat. You know, mm -hmm. I've been guilty of it. I have mm -hmm. been so guilty of it. You know, y'all, <laughs> I like I like a good beat, y'all. Like, I've been so guilty of it. So I'm not just talking to you on tea time with Jesus. Like, I was not convicted of this. I was talking to... Uh, Miss Eldrita yesterday, and I said, I'm so sad because I felt so deceived. So music has been used to establish the culture and morality of the time period. That's how great of an impact it, it's had. Think about, you know, I was reading some things about like when rock and roll first came out and some of the quotes from, there was one quote by Lil Richard that was like, rock and roll helps you to lose your inhibitions and allows you to do what you want to do. Hmm. And it's just like, there's freedom in Christ, but he's not going to use the phrase, lose your inhibitions, right? That's not, that's not what that means, right? So the devil has deceived us for the sake of a beat. And so, um, where are we going to go with that, y'all? So music that worships God has an intent and purpose to worship. And for those who listen to that music, we understand how the spirit behind that music encourages us and breaks chains. Um, and so we understand that as believers, that there's an opposite of that. And so the enemy often hides his dirty work with a cool beat. Um, and so what, what prompted this conversation is that, like I said, the devil is not deceiving himself anymore. Okay. I may step on some, toes when I mention some of your favorite artists. Mm -hmm. But the devil is not deceiving us. So are we going to choose celebrity or are we going to choose Christ? They're both C's. Which C you going to roll with? Celebrity or Christ? How deep do you want to go? How worth it do you feel like it is? You know, um, I was at a graduation party last Sunday and some of those old songs from like high school and college came on and, you know, Leslie started dancing and the Lord was like, you shouldn't have danced to that. 
maybe one out of the few songs. Cause, cause I said, I was telling my niece, these lyrics are just awful. They're just awful. I said, I can't dance to this. They're awful. Um, so again, you can't give up what the Lord is wanting to do for the sake of a beat. So it's important to understand the original intent of something before you start. And then once you understand the original intent, then you can kind of go from there. You know, I was think I was looking at, um, hold on guys, I want to bring out the quote so I can read it exactly. How there's so much blasphemy in music. There's so much, I hate Christ, I'm making a mockery of him in music. Um, a popular artist that comes to mind is the artist Lil Nas. I didn't know much about him. I just know that he sung a country and Western song, but the Holy Spirit had me to investigate further. And when I began to investigate further, this was outright blasphemy toward the Lord, outright blasphemy toward the Lord. Um, and I said, is this guy popular? Are people not seeing that he has shoes that he calls Satan shoes? Like when I tell you the devil's not hiding anymore, he's not hiding. He has Satan shoes and there's drops of human blood inside the sole of the shoe. And people are buying this and saying, oh, it's just music. No, let me tell you what's happened. This guy has some pain, some deep rooted pain and rejection. And the enemy has found a way to come into his life and pervert the pain, okay? He didn't take it to the Lord. Lil Nas didn't take it to the Lord. The enemy had a way of taking this pain, perverting it and using it for his purposes. Mm -hmm. Does he know the full damage that he's doing? I don't know how ignorant he is to it. Looks like he's a willing participant to me, but I'm just saying as believers, we can't encourage our children to say, oh, it's just music. Oh, that's your song. Oh, is it Old Town Road or Uptown? I don't know the name of it, but oh, it's okay to dance to that. We can't because what we're doing is we're telling our children, we're getting them numb, their spirits numb to what is and what is not of God. And let me tell you, friends, what you don't want to do is lead your children down a wrong path because of our ignorance. We can't do that. There's a scripture that says, and I, I don't have it in front of me, but it's better to lead, um, better to tie a rock around your neck and jump into an ocean, which is basically drowning yourself, than to lead a child astray. Yes, I'm gonna say that again, because that's a real scripture. It's better to jump into an ocean and kill yourself than to lead a child astray. And if we who are adults and you know aiming to be mature in Christ, are ignorant of this and leading our children down the wrong path. Our children are supposed to stand out. They are not supposed to blend in. We are not to be, you know, at parties thinking it's cute for your child to be gyrating to songs that are degrading women and blaspheming the Lord. That is not of God. And so there are some songs that just have outright blasphemy. And I was reading um, from this book and I was looking at these lyrics and I was telling my husband, I was like, oh my gosh, do people not know this? Like, like John Lennon, I didn't know much about John Lennon. I knew that he was part of the Beatles, but his song, I think it's Imagine, says, imagine there is no heaven. Imagine there is no hell. Like, I'm sorry, if you love the Lord, he never professed to love the Lord, but if you love the Lord, why would you imagine there's no heaven? Because heaven is our hope. Heaven is our home. So why would you imagine that? And you're like, oh, Leslie, it's just a song. And I'm saying this. If you say you love your mom, you say, I love my mom. My mom is great. I love her. I adore my mom. She's wonderful. And someone or I write a song that just blasphemies your mom, that just degrades your mom in the highest extent. To, to, to the highest extent. And you, for the sake of a beat, still, hey, that's my song. All of that song is talking about your mama. 
in all sorts of ways, but you for the sake of the beat say, that's my song. The question would be, or my question to you would be, do you really love your mom? Do, do you really love her? And that's how the enemy works, right? He, he hates God. He cannot stand Jesus. Like he utterly hates him. And so if he can get you on your band, on his bandwagon, chiming into a song that is blasphemy against the person he hates for the sake of a beat and you're deceived by it, you have just got, it just worked out the way he intended it. Exactly. This is real. Mm -hmm. This is real. I'll just kind of give some other some other songs from this from this book that really talks about blasphemy and I'm just bringing it to attention to our attention um you know Madonna had a song just like a prayer and I remember hearing that song when I was younger and I was listening to this song about a couple of months ago and I was like oh my gosh that's not talking about the Lord she's blaspheming the Lord but when I was younger I didn't know then apparently Lady Gaga has a song called Judas, right? Where she's playing Mary Magdalene and pretends that she is in a love triangle with Jesus and Judas. And ultimately she chooses Judas and Mary, Ju Judas and Jesus end up together in a hot tub. What? Who does that? We can't say we love the Lord. And then sing to songs are artists who blatantly blasphemy like our Lord. You know, we all know Marilyn Manson. Um, you know, we know that he's done tearing up Bibles and all sorts of foolish stuff mm. on the um, on the stage. Um, you know, there's, you know, I know y'all love Jay-Z and Beyonce. I know. But anytime you're calling yourself a mockery of the name of Jesus, Jehovah, that's not, I don't care. It's not, if you have the Holy Spirit and you, Holy Spirit would not allow you to do that. Now, again, mm -hmm. if you don't want to give up your music, I'm not trying to tell you to give up your music. I'm just telling you to surrender your, app, your music appetite to the Lord. And if you don't think it's that deep, then that's fine. You don't have to go that deep. But for those who choose to align themselves with the Lord and was like, God, I want you in every area of my life, including my music, then you may want to know these things. You may want to know. You know, I was reading, um, there was a song, um, hmm, gosh, I was just telling, I was just allowing my husband to read the lyrics because I pulled it up and it was by, uh, it was by Tupac and Biggie. And what's the name? I just, I just literally, I just literally looked up the lyrics. It was awful, y'all. Like it was awful about the things they wanted to do with Mary and, you know, how they said, forget God, but it wasn't forget because you won't let me in the pearly gates. Like it was awful. This is so disrespectful to the Lord, but yet, we like have claimed these celebrities over Christ. And so my question is to you, is that like, what is your, what is your allegiance and how far, how deep do you want to go? Okay. And then we'll, we'll end with this scripture here. Ecclesiastes seven, five. I always pronounce this wrong. Ecclesiastes seven, five. It says, it is better to heed the rebuke of a wise person than to listen to the song of fools. Mm -hmm. mm. Some of these artists are foolish and they're being used by the enemy and whether they realize it, whether they've made allegiances with him, I don't know. There's all sorts of theories that are connected with that. And I'm not going down that rabbit trail because I don't know. But what I do know is that the work that they're putting out doesn't represent the father who I say that I love 
And Jesus, who is the Lord and the Savior of my life, it does not represent him at all. And because it does not represent him, and it goes outside of his intention of music, then I personally cannot entertain them. And I personally cannot allow them to entertain me. And so that's my encouragement to you this morning is to not be deceived. The enemy is, he's not even hiding himself anymore. It's there, but don't be so deceived that you think it's its just play. Because again, if the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you, you're not gonna dress up like the devil, create some shoes, they call them the devil shoes and put human blood in it. The Holy Spirit just would not allow you to just do that. He just wouldn't allow you to do it. And so don't encourage your children to do it. We got to protect this generation. I feel like the Lord is all is what I'm on. What I'm about to say is that just generation of children. God wants to use mightily. If you have kids, if you have grandkids, know that this generation of children, the enemy is after them the hardest because God wants to use them in a great way. That there's some things that are that are going to go down. There are some things that are coming up. And these children cannot afford to be deceived. They're going to be used as like the heroes of the story is what I feel like the Holy Spirit is saying. There will be the heroes of the story. And if their spirit is darkened, then they're not able to be heroes. They're working with darkness. But if their spirit is light and they have the power of the Holy Spirit, then they can stand up to that darkness with strength and power. And we're not raising our children. This is not, this, this is going down a rabbit trail. The Holy Spirit is on this. This is not about academics. Right. Academics is not going to save the soul of your child. Not saying it's important, but whether your children get A's and B's or whatever the case, this is about does your children, are they able to discern the things of the spirit versus the things of the world? Is their spirit attuned to that? The Lord can fine tune the academics. That's not what this is about. Is their heart surrendered to Christ? Don't let your child close up in a room with a tablet or computer and YouTube. Don't let them do that. The enemy works in confinement. He works in darkness. He works in solitude. Do yes. not let them be deceived. Let the light of Christ in your home. Play, play the joy of the Lord it throughout your home through praise and worship music and teach your children how to discern and you, friends, in turn, learn how to discern yourself. Amen. 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 Do you have anything you'd like to add, Ms. Eldrita? Um, just to say, know the, know the voice of God. Knowing the voice of God is very important. And how we get to know the voice of God is by listening, reading the word, reading his word. He left us the Bible. Yeah. That is his voice. He will speak to you. The Bible is living and it's alive. Amen. He will speak to you through that. And once you know his tone, any other tones, you will be able to tune out. That's good. That's mm -hmm. good. That's good. Okay. So, our, so the journal question for today is this. I'm going to give everyone a second to get your pens or whatever, computer, however you choose to. So the first question I always like to ask is, what is the Holy Spirit? How has the Holy Spirit spoken to you? Because I know he has. How has the Holy Spirit spoken to you? How has he prompted your heart to move in a certain direction? How is he nudging your heart? You see, the enemy is banking on that you will just get up and forget this ever happened. But guess what? Is we not going to do that. Time out. Friends, we say he's running rampant and things are bad, but... We have to stand up as the church. We have to let our light shine. You know, some of these bad things are prophecy and they will happen. Yes, they will happen. But we are we have a part in this that is bringing solution and wisdom to the hurting and to the broken. And we may say, oh, Leslie, prayer is not enough. No, prayer is how you get wisdom to take action. Action with no wisdom is reckless. So how has the Holy Spirit moved on your heart? He might have said, you know, turn off certain videos from your uh, from your grandchildren. You know, I, if it's okay with Seltrina, Seltrina's told me, shared with me stories and how she's like, you know, she's seen 
a grandchild watching something, she's like, oh, no, we're turning that off. We're not doing that. We're not, we're not doing that here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you might be saying, you know, well, you don't want to hold them too tight that you don't allow them to have fun. I think part of that is a lie from the enemy. I think that if you follow the Holy Spirit, then you have to trust God. You got to trust God. You're not being a tyrant. You're walking in truth and wisdom and doing as the Lord is leading you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So don't let the enemy put that fear in you. And I talk to myself, too. So is there a is there a song, is there a genre of music that the Holy Spirit, our second journal question, is there a genre of music or a song that the Holy Spirit is asking you to lay down? Or is there an artist that the Holy Spirit is asking you to lay down? Mm-hmm. It's I know. They've been your favorite since 99. I understand. <laughs> I get it. I get it, y'all. Mm-hmm. Are you remember? You know, maybe you shouldn't have those memories, right? Like maybe <laughs> the Lord is saying, lay it down because you were not that person, friend. You are a new creature in Christ. I need you to lay it all the way down. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just, um, I can't remember that song. It was, I wish I could remember that song that with, and I, and I, you know, I want to encourage you to look up some of these lyrics and not just take my word, but that song that we just looked up, maybe it doesn't, I don't know, that song, it was Biggie and Tupac and it was a remix of something, but it was just so disrespectful of the Lord. So disrespectful. And my heart goes out to them because I wonder if they if they repented. It was blasphemous to the Lord. It was like forget forget God, but he didn't say forget. He used the other F word. And so it's like I wonder if he had an opportunity to repent before he died. But my question is like he was ex- I mean, he had talked they I think they both kind of rapped about their death, but I don't think they were expecting to die in that moment. <laughs> and Pat said, I have to go back to the 60s and think. <laughs> oh, boy. But, but I don't think, you know, Tupac or Biggie, maybe they weren't expecting to die that night. But I wonder if they repented. There's still hope and redemption. But I wonder if they repented. And if they did, then wonderful. Sure. But for some reason, y'all, I'm not too sure if they had that opportunity. That brings up a great point because we don't know when that last second is for any of us. Mm-hmm. And we don't want to be like, okay, I'm going to listen to it one more time or I'm going to do this one more time, whatever that may be. Mm-hmm. And you don't have that one more time and you don't have that chance to repent. So it's right. really important that we are in tune and in step with God daily, every day, every millisecond of our life, because the next second is not promised to us. Right, right. So we're not saying that, you know, listening to music is, if you're a believer in Jesus, is going to send you to hell. That's not what we're saying. Mm -hmm. What we're saying is that it can cut off from you experiencing the fullness of the the. The, the way that the Lord wants to use you and the fullness of the life that he has for you here because there's some deception because you're not able to see, you're not able to walk powerfully with wisdom. But we're saying in the case of um, this song with Tupac and Biggie, they were, they were blaspheming the Lord, which indicates to me that they did not have Jesus in their hearts the way that they talked about the Lord and, mm-hmm. and the things that they wanted to do to Mary, like they didn't have Jesus in their hearts, unfortunately. And so, um, which leads me to wonder after that song was made, did they get Jesus in their heart? Did they have a chance to repent before they died? Um, So that's just something to think about. So is there a song or music an artist that the Lord, Holy Spirit is like, "Mm, Anna, you gotta lay that down or Susie, it's time to put that up or, 
So my, I'll give you my song, y'all, since we're we're having this wonderful tea time. My song is The Wobble, y'all. Now, you know, The Wobble is like the line dance song, but the lyrics are so bad, y'all. I can't be dancing to that. They're so bad, y'all. They do. But that gets everybody on the dance floor, but the Lord is like, <laughs> I feel convicted every time I get up there <laughs> and I'm going to have to lay that down, okay? That's what I'm saying. Uh-huh. We're all in this together. Yeah. The name of that song, Leslie, is Hail Mary. No, no, no. It was another one. It was another one? Yeah, it was another one. It started with a D. De- Deception, the de- de- something or another. Mm, okay. It, it was one that I hadn't heard of before. I gotcha. Okay. Well, they made another one, too. <laughs> and, it, and it's the remix, particularly the remix version. Because I looked up both lyrics. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I can't. I thought I printed it out, but I can't find it. And so my third question um, is this. It's not really a question, but it's more so an action. It's to render that to the Holy Spirit. Because you can't do it in your own strength. You might press play again, but to ask the Holy Spirit to open up your eyes. So not only that song, that artist, that genre of music, but allow you to see the spirit behind it. Because you don't want to participate in anything that is against your God. Mm-hmm. Give everybody a second to write that down. I am going to see if I can find that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I didn't print it out. Maybe I didn't print out that that uh, that page with that song on there. And we're going to surrender it to the Lord. So we'll, we'll pray now. We'll pray. Um, I'll start it off in prayer. And then, uh, Ms. Aldrita, if you want to chime in and wrap it up. So I'll, I'll, I'll kick off the prayer and then you can chime in and pray us all the way out if you'd like to. <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you, Lord, for your spirit, for your truth, for your wisdom. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in the hearts of our friends today, Lord, how you're taking us all from glory to glory, God, um, and from faith to faith, Father, glory to glory. That's like levels of glory, God, which indicates to us that you never designed for us to stay as baby Christians and on the same level, but you've entire, you have, um, it is your will for us to grow, Father God, in you. So, Lord, we thank you, God, that Father, we talked about a lot today about a very heavy and personal subject to many, Lord God. And Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, that you have called us to love people, but not to participate in sin. And God, I just pray that that our friends today um, hear the difference, um, that you love people, you love the artists, but you don't like the sin. And so, Lord God, we just pray, God, for their deliverance. Um, the ones that are here that we mentioned, God, we pray that they will come into the fullness and the knowledge of who you are, Jesus. Lord God, we pray that they would repent, Lord God, and that, Father, you would heal any hurts in their hearts, Lord, because, Father, um, the pain, God, that is screaming out in the music comes from a place of heart, of hurt in their hearts that has been unresolved um, and unsurrendered to you, Lord God. And so, Father, we pray that you get to that place, that you will rest their souls. They will come into the kingdom of God. And Father, we just thank you for strengthening us on this journey. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this time that we've had together. Father, thank you that you're going before us, making our paths clear. Father, I ask you that you strengthen everyone on this stream today. Lord, give them the strength and the courage to be the loud voice that you want them to be. God, give them the strength to turn away 
from those things that are not pleasing to you so that they may become a sweet fragrance to your nostril. Father, I ask that each and every person that's listening to this and will listen to it in the rebroadcast, that God, that they are prosperous in every area of their life, God that their children are blessed, that their children are protected. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that whatever concerns them, God, that you are taking care of that and you are watching over them and keeping them in all of their ways and making their pathways straight. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Oh, it's okay. LaVar said is dying to live. By Nine. Tupac and Biggie. I don't know. Was that it, LeVar? That's the one we listened to or read the lyrics to this morning. Di di but it's the remix. It's the remix. You got to make sure you put in remix for that because it's two different versions. Yeah, mm -hmm. Amen. So God bless you all. Thank you for uh, joining us this morning and for um, having an open heart, uh, for not clicking off <laughs> and for buckling your seatbelt and joining us this morning, this is what I ask. I ask that you share this message. Um, I don't often ask that you share because I'm like, if people listen to it, they will, but I'm asking you that you share, that you evangelize in a sense, because that's sharing the good news, that you share this message to those that you know um, who will be blessed by it. Share it in your post, share it on your timeline, encourage people to listen. Um, because we are all in this together and um, stay tuned because um, the trailer of the new podcast will be released on Tuesday. Yay. Officially to the public. And we had a wonderful interview that will come out. Um, maybe I'll give you, okay, I'll give you a sneak peek, a wonderful interview that will come out in July um, with a lady who's a founder of an organization called Pro Grace. And Pro Grace is an organization that teaches churches and organizations how to talk about the issue of abortion with truth and grace in Jesus and removing the politics from it, but talking about it as Jesus would. The interview was so good. That's going to come out in July. And yeah, you don't want to miss it. So anyway, thank you all for joining in and tuning in and all that wonderful stuff. Please share the message and have a wonderful Saturday and we will see you next Saturday. Bye guys. Bye.